So Joe Aker has uh, been fairly active over the past several years uh, on the M&A front, uh, divesting of Mercury a couple of years ago, obviously acquiring RS2 this year. So, you know, what's next for you uh, on the M&A front and, uh, you know, what factors are influencing that for you? Well, the, what, what's next will be what has been the, the premise of Acre and our sort of investment thesis is around the highly fragmented access control systems business. So if you look at most of what we required to really fit that strategy. And what we'll look at in the future is to continue to look at opportunities within this still fragmented landscape. And Joe, what do you look for in an M&A target? You know, what are some red flags that you try to avoid? And you know, what, what do you look for in, in terms of one of those M&A targets for you? Well, does the, does the target strategically fit? That's very important, of course. Is the valuation likely to be within the right bandwidth of, you know, uh, affordability and, uh, and, and within some reasonable level of, 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 of expectation of us being able to achieve value, you know, someday and having that be joined to part of the uh, Acre group. Those are important. Uh, red flags are just trying to, you know, possible red flags to avoid or just making sure the technology is sound, that the management is competent, that there's continuity of the business with the people and, and the technology going forward. And what trends do you see driving the industry as we move forward and, and which, you know, have really influenced your strategy? Well, the, the trends we see, uh, and we've talked about many of the trends uh, consistently for a while, are around the growth of uh, greater penetration of access control within various types of facilities, particularly with the more advanced wireless locks, and that type of technology that the big lock companies like Legion and Asabwai and uh, Norma Kaba have brought to the forefront as they've gotten smarter about the electronic side of the business versus the mechanical side of the business. That's been a trend that, that has been happening with two happening. Mobile credentials, while still a small part of the market, growing fast. Uh, Cloud-based offerings, uh, both in the intrusion or burglar alarm, the access control side of this business, same thing. Still from a fairly small base, but growing fast. And then the last thing I'll comment on is a focus on how secure are our systems against outside penetration. Uh, many of the systems that are out there are still quite old and are susceptible and vulnerable. So we spent a lot of time looking at making uh, systems more uh, robust in terms of their security. You know what? What would you say excites you when it comes to emerging tech in this in this market? You know, you've typically invested in uh, companies that you know established brands and established products, but you know, would you be open to you know funding a, a startup around emerging tech in this industry? You know, I get excited when I hear about emerging technologies, uh, whether it's in in the area of biometrics or mobile credentials. Things like that are, are very exciting. It's not our typical business model to invest in some of those, just because of where uh, we sit in our uh, in our business today and how we're funded by our investors. But I, I always have time to talk to young entrepreneurs who've got a really great idea about the future. I do that quite a lot. And what kinds of unique insights, uh, you know, as having you know, somewhat regional-centric firms. You've got your your brands in Europe, and you've got your brands here uh, in North America. You know, what has that? You know, how how has that? You know, kind of informed your strategy, and, and what's the the biggest difference you've noticed between the markets? Well, uh, while we have a number of companies that even at times compete with each other, what we have found is that there is very little overlap in the channel partners that they use. There are very um, significant differences in the ge geographic strengths. Again, Europe versus the U.S., certain parts of the U.S. versus other parts of the U.S., where the strengths of these businesses are and where they've evolved from their roots and matured. So as long as we kind of keep that balance, uh, we're, we're happy to uh, allow them some independence and to continue to grow you know, individually 
individually, even though they're part of a group, that allows greater resources and maybe some sharing of technology and best practices over some period of time.